everyone. Welcome to our online worship at North Kent Presbyterian Church. We're glad you've joined us this morning. Just a reminder that the announcements read in the service online are from the previous week's in-person service. So please check your email for up-to-date announcements and prayer list. And now, let us worship the Lord. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Um, please remember to bring your name tags, our new friends and visitors. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, especially guests. If you are a guest today, please know we're happy to meet you and glad you're here. We hope you will be blessed by the worship service and our fellowship time afterwards in the parking lot, including, because this is National Ice Cream Day, <laughs> ice cream. Our goal is to show you the love and hospitality of Christ. May everything that happens today in this worship service bring us closer to our loving God. We will record the in-person service and post it during the following week. Since the online service will be delayed a week, please read your emails for up-to-date announcements. Margie Gentry's memorial service will be held here at 11.30 a.m. this Friday, July 23rd. Please come and share your memories of this extraordinary woman. Charlie will host a catered reception after the service. S'more Saturdays at church continue at 7 p.m on Saturday, July 24th. Everyone is welcome to enjoy a bonfire and s'mores. Fixing for s'mores will be provided. Please bring a lawn chair, your own beverage, a stick or a long fork, and any s'more fixings you like besides the usual. Boy Scout Troop 282 will hold a court of honor and 30th anniversary celebration at 7 p.m. on Monday, July 26th. The troop will honor their current scouts' achievements and welcome by alumni, including some of their 40-plus Eagle Scouts and past Scoutmasters. Everyone is invited. Cake will be served following the ceremonies. NKPC's 2021 Fishing Contest continues. Thomas Adkate still leads the Youth Division with Moe Bassett in second. Juan Ron Weybrandt leads the adult division with Colin Nelson in second. Congratulations to all of you. Any challengers out there? The next Joy Bicycle Ride will be Saturday, August 7th, from Middleville to Irving, about nine miles round trip. Meet at the church at 9 a.m. to consolidate. Picnic lunch will be shared, and everyone is invited. Please join me in the call to worship after we have the call. <laughs>
Our God loves this world. God called it into being. God renewed it through Jesus Christ. God sustains it through the Holy Spirit. Come, Creator God. We are open to your spirit. Jesus, the Word made my flesh, dwells among us. Come, let us worship God together. Our opening hymn is number 611, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And now the assurance of God's forgiveness. Please turn and read these words to your neighbor. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, or what has been done to you, the love and the grace of God is greater than our brokenness. I assure you that through the work of Jesus Christ, we are all completely forgiven.
Our first lesson this morning is from Psalms 139, verses 1 through 18, and that's in your Pew Bibles on page 974. O oh Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for the darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Was he thinking about my country?
second scripture lesson for today comes from the book of 1st John chapter 3 verses 11 through 24 for this is the message you heard from the beginning we should love one another do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother and why did he murder him because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him this is how we know what love is Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in its presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. My friends, in our conversations with culture on this Sunday, we have a song that asks some of the biggest and most fundamental questions of faith. Neil Young asks all about what God's intentions were in creating humanity and creating everything in the universe. Now, we, while we as humans cannot say that our human brain could ever fully comprehend the cognitive processes of God, the maker of the universe, there are some ideas and questions from this song that may be helpful to us on our faith journeys as we try to understand the Christian framework that we put our faith in. Now, the song began with questioning the three identifiers that humans historically have used to divide themselves from one another. Those three are country, race, and religion. We humans do find these labels as useful categories for understanding each other's context. 
After all, a Hispanic Catholic from Argentina is coming from a very different place than an Asian Buddhist from China. However, Neil Young gets right to the core question of those divisions when he asks if only he, as a white Christian of European descent, if only he is made in the image of God. Now, this is a common mental trap that we can easily fall into. God is not an old white male of European descent with flowing white hair and beard. Even that is how Michelangelo depicted God on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Even the song falls into that trap by assuming that God is male and constantly calling God he throughout the stanzas of the song. But Young is absolutely correct in his next question about how God's image is found in every living thing. Even though a tree is a very different entity than an eagle or a child, all of these are made in the image of God because all living things are growing and are changing and are in relationship with all the other entities in their environment. The philosopher Charles Hartshorn, a process theologian, wrote in his book, Omnipotence and Other Theological Mistakes, that the idea of God that is completely perfect and completely unchangeable, a concept originally from the philosophy of Plato, is, upon reflection, completely unacceptable. God being unchangeable is also not at all supported by scripture. Such a definition of perfection is not a good thing. To be perfect and unchanging and never affected by humans or the environment around you would make God nothing more than an infinite, unfeeling rock and unable to interact with anything. By contrast, scripture describes God as being in constant relationship with humanity and God's creation. And there are even scriptures that describe God as changing God's mind. To be in relationship is to be alive. To be in relationship and affected by humans is a better thing than to be a static perfect power that is impervious to everything. In the second verse of his song, Neil Young questions the limitations of the Christian religion. He begins by asking if God was only planning on having believers, or if God had a plan for people of other faiths. This question becomes very significant once Christianity teamed up with government and had powerful armies at its disposal. It is a sad fact that historically, Christians have shown great intolerance for people of other faiths. And Neil Young reminds us that Christians have gone to war and have killed people of other faiths in our crusades to make more disciples. It is a great fault of Christianity to use the threat of death in order to share a message of love with people who believe differently. It is directly against the intent and the message of the gospel. In our second scripture lesson for today from 1 John chapter 3, we are told to love and to care for our neighbors and to listen to our conscience. And, and in this way, we will know that God is with us. We are to be guided by love. Now, at first glance, this seems to be a way for people of other faiths to also have access to God. But in the scripture, this admonition sits right next to the command to believe in Jesus Christ. It seems that those two ideas are essentially connected. We must have both actions and belief in Christ. But 
Could it be that caring for one's neighbors and following our conscience, our actions that ultimately will lead someone into a saving relationship with Jesus? Is it a requirement that belief in Jesus has to come first? Can that knowledge and belief in Jesus come even after our death? What about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob of the Old Testament, people who lived on earth centuries before Jesus did? If God made a way to heaven for the Old Testament patriarchs, I believe God has made a way for those people of other faiths, even if I don't know anything about it. But the God that I know and love makes a way for everyone to come and know God. For me, the third verse of Neil Young's song brings up the question of God knowing everything. This is called omniscience and human free will. Neil Young asks if we are allowed to choose who we love. He wonders if we are given voices to only have those voices silenced by God or by the church. And he also asked if we were given the gift of vision without God knowing what we would see. Now, in the classic theist view, the God we heard about from our first scripture reading from Psalm 139, God knows our thoughts before we think them, and God knew us inside and out even before we were born. This is a, a description of a God who is everywhere at every time, a God who is omnipresent, a God who is all-powerful, called omnipotent, the ultimate force behind everything. But this sort of relationship with an omni-God leaves no space for human free will or human choice. It leaves no room for a real relationship between God and us. In this theology, humans become pre-programmed robot dolls moving through our lives to a predetermined ending. It is a theology that logically brings us to the questions of predestination. And if God pre-chose some people for heaven while not choosing others. It becomes a paradox for a loving God to create a system of existence where real love could not ever flourish with real human freedom. Now, to my way of thinking, the solution to this dilemma is to imagine that God exists both inside and outside of time. God moves into the realm of the limitations of time in order to be in relationship with humanity. When God comes into time, God limits God's own self in power and knowledge in order to do so. And within, within the realm of time that we exist in, we as humans have the freedom to actually love or actually reject God. We also have the freedom to use our voices for good or for hate and to put into practice our vision for a better future for the world. While God may have a script planned out for our lives with a way for us to best use our gifts and talents and skills, because of our free will, it is our choice if we choose to live out that calling from God or if we go off God's script and off on our own path. But in order to have an actual real, an actual relationship with God, in order for love to really exist, in order for the change of heart of salvation to actually occur, there must be the freedom of human free will to choose otherwise. We have to be able to walk away from God in order to be able to walk back toward God. God has to limit God's own power and knowledge within the spectrum of time in order for us to have free will to choose to love God. Now, the other night after dinner, 
we noticed that the door from our kitchen to our garage was open and our cat Maddie had escaped. It was about 7 p.m. and Elisa and I, we circled the house and the neighbor's houses, calling Maddie's name, looking in all of her usual hiding spots. But Maddie was nowhere to be seen. She had run off. For three hours, we searched in and out and around the house. We were texting our neighbors, posting her picture on Facebook, then heading back out to search some more. Finally, around 10 p.m., Maddie showed up at the door and my husband, Bill, let her into the house. She pranced around for the whole next hour. She was looking very pleased with herself because she had gotten away with something that she knew was out of bounds. But the point of this story is that Maddie Cat chose to come back. She had the free will to stay out all night or to run off entirely. But she chose to come home and to stay in relationship with our family. We didn't know if she would return. We didn't know if we would ever see her again. That unknown future is what makes that relationship possible. It is also what makes compassion for our fellow human beings so valuable. If we can choose to ignore our neighbors and close our eyes to their suffering and sorrow and do nothing for them, that compassion to be there for them and to give them what they need that becomes the foundation for creating a world of peace and justice together. In conclusion, Neil Young's theological questions in this song shine a light on the cracks in the classical foundations of religion and the limitations of Christianity as a system. But the song is not without hope. It points us toward a better and more inclusive faith, a faith built more on love, compassion, and the free will of humanity to have an actual, real relationship with God, our Creator. As we live out our lives within time here on earth, we each have been given the gift of freedom to choose love over fear, and to live into the hope that God is slowly shepherding us into the creation of a new kingdom of love and peace and joy. May it come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you could please stand and sing our next song together. It is number 12, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
My friends, we have been blessed with so much. During this time of our offering, please count your blessings and reflect on all that you have. The offering plate is by the door on your way out. It will not be passed today. My friends, please join me in the prayer of dedication. Generous God, you have given us so much. You are faithful and provide for us. With joy, we bring to you our tithes and offerings. All we have, all we are, we give it to you. Just as Christ gave up everything for us, use us so your love will be demonstrated to the world. Amen. Oh, let me cast my lot in my fast. Let me fish from an old cane pole and pretend that I just ain't. Well, woman, don't call me to supper or bother me with your threats. Just let me sit on the side of this bank and catch what I can get. Oh, find me the best in bait board and make it wiggle and squirm. Then send me the one that got away with my and Lord, don't do me like Peter and call me from these nets. Just let me sit on the side of this bank and catch what I can get. I'll spend my time assorting lures and baiting up my hook. Won't sit again and only read your holy blessed book. Don't want to change the world, Lord, or win this biggest bet. Just let me sit on the side of this bank and catch what I can get. Oh, a fisherman's life is easy as pulling worms in rain. And doing other work, Lord, it causes me great strain. Don't make me walk on water or just let me sit on the side of this bank and catch what I can get. Oh, cast your cares upon the Lord, your word told me to do. So here I am on this fine shore doing what you told me to. Oh, Lord, don't do me like Peter and call me from these nets. Just let me sit on the side of this bank and catch what I can get. The sky is blue and I am 
true to this favorite sport of mine To cast my eyes, to cast my line To fish just one more time I remember the man you called their boat Filled to the rim But you made them fishers all instead of fish Fishers of men You're angling to call us anglers from our persistence and our patience are right for you to ask. But we just need a moment to meditate and reset. So let us sit, forget to fret, and catch what we can get. Oh Lord, don't ask me to leave this spot and go back home again. Just let me rest and spin my lure and I was meant for fishing in this gentle, natural world And sitting here just to watch for fish and see the water swirl Now I don't know if I can spread your message or your net Wanna stay right on this sandy shore before your sun is set so, Lord, don't do me like Peter and call me from these nets. Just let me sit on the side of this bank and catch what I can get. My sinker set, my net is set, I feel a mighty tug. Won't leave too soon till afternoon, won't drink from any jug. I won't be bad or even sad on this bird. I'll sit right down right here and now and fish the day away. So Lord, don't do me like Peter and call me from these nets. Just let me sit on the side of this bank and catch what I can get. Just let me sit on the side of this bank and go fishing. <laughs> Will you please join me in prayer? Dear God, we thank you for this creation that you have made for us. For the side of the bank of lakes and streams and rivers where we can sit and fish or just enjoy a sunset on a summer evening. We thank you for children, for their laughter, for the joy that they bring. We thank you for our families and friends who keep us company and make life so sweet. Dear God, we pray for those who have health concerns. We pray for Teresa Smith's mother in Florida who has numerous health issues. We pray for Craig Demarest, the brother of Chris Shears, who's having trouble moving his arms, and for Linda Shears, Chris's sister-in-law, who is in hospice care. We remember Dana and Emily Graham, who are grieving the loss of Emily's sister, Lois. We pray for Julie Haggerty for her brain cancer treatment. We give thanks that it is going well. We pray for Lee Ann Frampton's sister, Sharon, who has now has a diagnosis of a 95% blockage, the arteries in her heart. We pray for upcoming surgery and treatments. Dear God, we pray for those who are suffering from COVID. In many places in the country where the vaccination level is low, there is a huge resurgence of cases. Dear God, be with those healthcare workers. Be with our healthcare workers, including Kathleen Bell and Mickey Brazier and Ed Gates neighbor Sarah Darnell. May they all have the equipment and the personnel and the treatments needed to help to save people's lives. We pray for those who are fighting cancer, for Deb McIntyre's cousin, Sarah Detmer, who was diagnosed with breast cancer. For Deb's friend, Melinda, 
who has passed away. We pray for Angie Ferguson Pullman's mother, Sharon, who is battling melanoma of the eye. Dear God, there are others who are fighting cancer. Susan Lokers, Michelle Mucha, Angie Ferguson, and Hal Ringler. We pray still for Chet Knott's sister-in-law, Gloria, and for Sharon Moore. We pray for those who are not here with us, especially Carol Heidenberg and Phyllis Alsing and Vicki Drum Kayserline. We pray for Jeremiah Morgan, who's back to work recovering from surgery. We pray for those who are homeless, who are struggling to find housing in this tremendous market that we are in. We pray for people struggling with depression, for marriages that are broken apart, for people and relationships which need your healing, dear God. We pray for strength and healing for those who are journeying with fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, and glaucoma. We pray for those who are struggling with addictions and illness and loss. We pray for Camp Greenwood, that they would be able to raise the funds needed to purchase all the property to continue their ministry. We pray for our country, for the racism which is still so apparent. We pray for those who are dealing with the criminal justice system and for those who are sitting in prison not knowing when their time will end. Dear God, you are everywhere at every place. You enter into time to sit with us in our dimension, in our experience, and you hold us close and fast in your loving presence. Dear God, give us the strength to care for our neighbors and to be your disciples. For we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 23, God, You Spin the Whirling Planets. <laughs>
words of love and benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine down with love upon you. May God be gracious to you and grant to you and the whole world no exceptions. God's amazing love and peace. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.